Hi, so it's now been three months since I left the UK and gave up, possibly forever, my Ionic electric car that I used to have. What have I achieved here since I arrived in Denmark three months ago? Let's talk about my wins and my fails in what I've been trying to do with my zero tailpipe emissions transport plans here in this video. Okay, so I've made myself a list to try and kind of stay on point today. So if I, I look down, it's because I'm, I'm looking at that. So I'm going to go through first my kind of wins and then I'll go through my kind of fails or the things that I still need to sort out or still need to do. And as anyone who's moved from one country to another, especially with family knows, it's quite disruptive. There's been a lot going on. It's been overwhelming at times, you know, feeling a bit like drowning and, and you know, stress, a weird kind of stress because it's a better place here, but um, still stress. And uh, so, you know, it's felt a bit chaotic. So I think sort of taking stock now three months in is a good thing to do. And maybe I can kind of put things in perspective and not be so hard on myself that, you know, I don't have a kind of brand new EV sitting outside, um, that there's maybe more to a kind of transport plan for a family for myself than that. So, yeah, let's get to it anyway. So, number one, then I've actually took the plunge and moved from the UK to Denmark. So, you know, I'll go into some reasons for that in this video and I've been talking about it in other videos, but I actually did it. I took the step. Um, I wasn't happy in the UK. And uh, you know, I don't think my family were either and would have faced some difficulties coming up with schools and things and jobs. And so we moved. So yeah, win number one is that we actually went through with it. Um, we've been thinking about it for a few years and we finally did it and we took the plunge. So number two related to that is that I think I have a better job. I have nicer colleagues. I still like a lot of my old colleagues. It's not talking about my immediate team that I used to work with, but the general sort of environment there. So yeah, better job better colleagues or nicer colleagues and a good working environment, I think, better than the UK. The UK universities, I work in the university sector, have some particular problems, policy problems and problems of processes and systems that make them very difficult to be kind of creative and do longer term research, which is the kind of thing I'm interested in. Yeah, so here, number two, better job, uh, nicer colleagues, better environment. Um, then number three related to that better quality of life. So where I'm renting now is right next to the outdoors, right next to nature. I lived in a very nice place before, but I had such a long commute, which I used to do in the Ionic Electric, that I didn't really take advantage of it. I was so tired from the commute, even though I enjoyed doing it in an electric car. I've made videos about that, joy of traffic, joy of coasting and so on. Um, yeah, but I didn't actually have time to really enjoy being in nature before, even though I was, you know, had a forest out the front of the house and so on before, and lovely view of a valley and so on. Yeah, I didn't really make the most of it because I was too tired. The commute wore me out. So I'm still commuting here, but it's generally a better quality of life. And I feel kind of, you know, walking around or catching the bus around or the few times I've been cycling. Yeah, really nice. Better quality of life. So that's number three. Uh, number four, I managed to register here um, as an EU resident. And under the Danish Brexit Act, that just protects me from all the uncertainties. I've said before, I don't want to get party political about this, but just arriving here before any arrangement has been made, it protects me under Danish law that I will continue to have the rights I had beforehand. So that's good. And then related to that, I've already lost count, maybe number five. Um, I've got my central, central person register number, CPR number, which you need to do all kinds of things. One of the things I wasn't aware of, and I deliberately didn't think about a lot of things before I came, because I probably wouldn't have done it if I'd thought about it too deeply. It's probably gone further than most countries on earth in terms of like digital government. And that just necessitates a lot of registrations and a kind of a flow chart, a sequence of things you need to do when you become a resident here and work here. Um, so yeah, the CPR is a kind of start of that. And I did that. I've got the NEM ID or Easy ID, which is like this kind of universal digital login to government websites, but all kinds of other authentication for payments and things. You pretty much can't live without it as an adult here. I've got a Danish bank account. That's probably number seven on my list now. And uh, the digital Danish banking in English and, and found out a bit about how that works. So not many things get explained to you here in Denmark, especially as a newcomer. And the Danish culture, you know, is a bit unusual, not necessarily bad, but just different in that people don't explain things. Sometimes even when you ask or ask for help. But yeah, I've got a, a Danish travel card, a Reiser court. Um, which means I can get around a bit cheaper and easier on the buses. I was paying a lot for single bus fares when I arrived here than these kind of bundled bus fares. I've got a Danish mobile number and I've applied to switch my UK driving license for a Danish driving license. Again, that's kind of a precautionary strategy about wanting to drive an EV here, own an EV, um, and I have a kind of Danish native kind of ID, a national uh, photo ID from Denmark. It's useful for that as well. Um, and again, if, if there's some... Again, not party political, but if there's problems around the way that Brexit, if it happens and if it's done, 
is done, um, I could end up having to take a Danish driving test, which I don't want to do. I do want to drive an EV here, hopefully, eventually, uh, but I don't want to have to take another driving test. Um, yeah, and there could be complications around the way things happen that mean the UK license ceases to become valid here in the same way. I don't know, but on a precautionary way, I've swapped my UK one for a Danish license. I should be able to pick that up soon. Then number 11, I think I'm up to, I've rented a house suitable for my family here. It's bigger than the one we had in the UK. It's expensive, but it's good and it's got space for the family now. And uh, the area is nice that we're in. So that's another one, number 11, I think. Uh, number 12, managed to actually get my family here to live in it. <laughs> yep. And uh, that's good. They, they, they're sorted out. And uh, they've also started school and kindergarten, my two children. So that's another win. I also cycled for the first time in 20 years. Now, I, firstly, as I've said before, I wouldn't be interested in bicycles at all unless there was electrification of cycling. And I, I don't think if I'd have stayed in the UK, I would have ever cycled again. I cycled in the 1980s on BMXs because uh, it was a whole craze and I was more doing stunts than cycling long distances. If I was cycling, it was just a BMX, you know, tracks and things like that with friends. And with the way that the infrastructure is in the UK and where I lived in kind of like north of England in the UK with very narrow valley roads and so on and very aggressive drivers, um, I would never have cycled anywhere. I would never have bought a bicycle. My daughter didn't learn to cycle there because it wasn't very safe. She will learn here. She's doing that now. Um, yeah, so, you know, not only did I kind of cycle for the first time in 20 years, which is a kind of zero tailpipe emissions form of transport, whether it's electrified or not. Um, yeah, and I tried this rental bicycle, which was a way of getting back into that. And it was scary and I was wobbly the first time I tried it, but I've, I've got my built my confidence back up since. And now I'm kind of teaching my daughter and my son has got his little roller bike. So related to that, yeah, I've got this little roller bike for my son. So he's getting used to balancing on a bike. And I've got a bike for my daughter now on a kind of um, like a lease, actually. Um, I haven't seen that in the UK. Maybe it exists, but it's a monthly payment. She can upgrade after two years, which is good because when she's grown, she can get a bigger bike. All the maintenance and kind of you know non-accident related repairs are covered, so punctures and things. And it gets servicing from time to time to keep the chain in good order and just give it a good look over and check the brakes and the lights and things. So that's that's perfect. Uh, so that's probably up to about number 15, I think, on my list of wins. Number 16, I did try out this hourly rental EV things, the Tadar scheme. Um, I've soured on it a bit since I kind of had a tyre blowout, but I'll probably go back to it. I think that's kind of normal that when something bad happens with things, even if it was dealt with very well, which it was in this case, you know, it kind of puts you off it for a bit. That's fairly normal. Um, I did try to do the shared rental EV things through Go More, but the guy cancelled on me, so that hasn't happened yet, but I might still go back to that. I'm in no rush to because the terms and conditions I think are lousy if that's possible. Um, I think people in the comments for that video agreed with me. Number 18, I think we're up to, I have test ridden some e-bikes. So I've test ridden a kind of normal bike with a, a hub electrified motor. And that was a lot of fun. And probably I'm gonna get something like that either for me or for my wife. And I've tried two different types of cargo bikes. So a three wheeler one and a two wheeler one, which I might end up actually getting. It might be a, a good way of getting around, commuting with the kids doing shopping, moving luggage around, that kind of thing. And um, yeah, the last one, then probably number 19, I have made new friends. I've kind of settled in and met some of, you know, work colleagues and um, people outside work and starting to meet some neighbours as well now recently. So that was nice as well. So that's kind of something like 19 wins. I think I've added it up there. So yeah, so not bad, quite a lot actually in three months and more than I kind of realised that I've been doing. There's probably things I've done that I've forgotten as well in that process, I guess, you know, have someone buy the house is another thing. Find a buyer for the house and put that into the formal process of selling it. Um, that was kind of, you know, started before I left the UK, which is why it's not really on the list. So let's get to my kind of fails anyway. What have I not managed to do? So not as many things as the winds actually, which is, is good news. So firstly, I don't have an EV. So I still miss my Ionic Electric, even after three months. I see ones driving around here. People have been commenting that the new second generation one might still be a good buy. Um, even with the known kind of slower charging issues because it's got the better range and it's got some kind of tech upgrades. We'll see if I can manage to get in one and try it. I may well be swayed over. We'll see. Um, related to that, I haven't managed to get though any EV test drives really. I've been in the Tesla store to ask about, you know, could I get the standard range, not the standard range plus year? And no, I can't. Uh, that was in the recent video. 
but I haven't managed to get test drive. So as far as I understand it, Danish culture works a lot better if you just ring people or go see them face to face. Doing stuff by email is, is just a non-starter here. Uh, you'll just end up sending multiple reminders and people just don't answer emails. And there isn't, aren't many customer relationship management systems connected to emails in with Danish companies or Danish shops and things. So you might email and it just goes into a void. Again, that's just different, it takes a bit of getting used to. But it means I need time to go around car dealerships and actually ask face to face and get people's business cards and then ring them and follow up and chase and so on. So it becomes a whole kind of adventure. I'm not saying that that's any worse than the UK, actually, because in the UK, it's a nightmare to get EV test drives, except at amazing places like the Milton Keynes Experience Center, where you can go in and pretty much the same day, show your driving license, give your national insurance number into the online system and be driving an electric car that you've never driven before in a few minutes with someone from the center to answer questions with you in a kind of unbiased, non-commission based information capacity, just telling you about the car. So that's great. There's nothing like that here in, in Aarhus. I don't know if there's something like that in Copenhagen, but um, yeah, it's a kind of effort and an adventure in its own right to even try to get test drives. Um, I'd love to get test drives of upcoming things like the Porsche Taycan and things. I, I think my chances of that are almost zero, but yeah, that would be lovely. Uh, third thing, third fail then. So that was firstly, I haven't got an EV. I haven't managed to get EV test drives. The third fail is I haven't yet got an electrified bike. Um, I'm kind of torn between getting one of the Rad Power Rad Runner bikes, very basic single gear cargo electric bike. They call it an electric utility bike. It's not like a sports utility vehicle, it's an electric utility bike. EUB, I guess you'd call it or something. Um, it looks good. It's coming out next week. I might sort of order one to try and get one soon because it's about a thousand euros cheaper than anything I can buy of similar kind of functionality here in Denmark. I have heard that Danish electric bikes are kind of more suited to the weather here, the salting of the roads and, and rust and stuff. Um, but a thousand euros cheaper. I think it might be worth a go of that. I might also get the cargo bike thing, the Urban Arrow family, but we'll see. We'll see. It's a lot of money, so we'll see. So that was the third one. I haven't yet got an electric bike. So as a kind of alternative non-car, you know, kind of car-free um, mode of transport, because I think it is good to challenge car dependency, even when it's electric car dependency. Number four, I haven't yet completed the house sale, but things seem to be fairly advanced on that. I'm getting some of the final paperwork now. And I apologize if I sound tired. I am tired and I probably have a cold coming on. Um, number five, fail. Haven't yet got our stuff here. So thank you to the removal company that still hasn't kept us updated and has made an absolute mess with that. So our old stuff is still in transit somewhere or storage somewhere ready to be transported to us. And we still don't have new stuff yet because I want to see how the old stuff fits in this rental place to work out, do we actually need to buy anything? And if so, what do we need to buy? And then the final thing, which I hope is not coming through too much on this is improved audio. So I'm still using this, um, I shouldn't be speaking that loud when it's that close, this kind of sure one plugged into my phone for filming. I had bought one of these, um, the Rode Wireless Go. It arrived defective, unfortunately, but they seem to be sorting that out. So I'm not gonna criticize them yet. Let's see if they managed to follow through and send the replacement through. There's been a whole palaver with that that I won't go into. Um, but yeah, hopefully that will enable me to kind of clip something here. It's exactly the same one that Bjorn Nilon is using, actually the same brand and be a bit more free and mobile and a bit more dynamic in the videos. Because I do want to sort of, now everything is getting sorted out after a long period of just stuff to do. I really want to make an effort in getting a car sorted out. Um, and it might be an adventure to try and live a car-free life for a bit, which I've been doing for three months, but kind of formally with a kind of cargo e-bike or something, um, and see if that works, and especially see if that works through winter, because there's pretty much no better time to test it. You can do all sorts of things in this nice summer um, with a family and so on, but yeah, biking around in, in the winter in Denmark, not as bad as maybe say further north places, Norway and so on, and bits of Sweden, but a good test. So that might be worth doing. And then if we don't like it, maybe anything we've bought, we can sell in the spring. So not be too much out of pocket. So yeah, that's my kind of wrap up of something like 19 or 20 wins and about uh, six or so fails. So I think things are going pretty well. I am tired, I'm busy this weekend, so I can't do much on the video making front. But yeah, please do subscribe if you'd like to sort of keep um, watching the sort of adventures we're having here and the decisions we're making bit by bit. I hope to improve the audio, as I've said, within a week or so, hopefully when they, when they send things. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me and bye for now.